Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Today, we're gonna to have a battle. Not a battle of the dogs, but a battle of the ASX companies. So I'm gonna look at two companies that you can compare because they're in the same sector. So let's have a look at the first company I will be uh, contesting. And that is Kathmandu, ticket code KMD. They are a New Zealand company, so most of you hopefully are aware of Kathmandu, the, the retail group or the stores. So they're more into the um, outdoor apparel. And about a year ago, Kathmandu bought Rip Curl. And again, you probably should be aware of Rip Curl. That's more into the surfing apparel, surfing wear, um, surfboards maybe, even that sort of thing. And the other company they own is Oboz Footwear. So it's a good footwear company, obviously based out of uh, Bozeman, Montana. And again, that's more to do with the outdoor sort of the scene. So our hiking boots, uh, running boots, that sort of thing. Um, but definitely the hiking boots. I'm not sure about the running boots. But anyway, so they're more into the, Kathmandu is more into the outdoor sort of scene. And they're going up against Premier Investments. So for those who don't know, Premier Investments hold a sort of a conglomeration of individual stores or companies. And those are Smiggle. For those who have kids will know what Smiggle does. I'm not totally sure what they do. All I know is they've got a very good growth profile throughout the world. Peter Alexander is more into the bedwear nightwear. And then we have all these clothing stores like Just Jeans, JJ's, etc. So a good, um, good assortment of uh, companies there that have premium investments. They also have a holding in Breville Group. And that's why they're holding in Maya, even though Solomon Liu, the chairman of uh, PMV, thinks uh, Maya Center is going bankrupt. Um, I don't know why you hold if you're thinking that. But anyway, let's get into the numbers. So I'm going to look at the numbers and then getting some technicals. So Premier Investments is the larger company. So by a factor of four, when you look at market cap, so three billion compared to 800 million, a little bit more shares on issue at Kathmandu by a factor of about six or about five. And share price, uh, premium investments is quite a bit higher. Share price just because, of course, the shares on issue is quite a bit lower. So $19 compared to $1.12. Getting to the important stuff, the nitty gritty. So premium investments, even though they're a larger company by a factor of four, only have uh, one and a half times the revenue of Kathmandu. So $1.2 billion of revenues by premium investments compared to $802 million for Kathmandu. When you look at uh, net profit after tax, um, one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of net profit after tax, and this is probably a good example of a reason why I don't like profits, so looking up at that solely because it can be distorted uh, on a year-to-year -year basis. And this year, uh, the net profit after tax for Kathmandu has been distorted only $8 million. Um, And I'm pretty sure that's depreciation and mortisation. They did have a massive increase in that sometimes it's just write downs, that sort of thing. So next line there, the operating cash flow is what I look at because that's a, a better sense of what the company is doing. And we can just see there, net operating cash flow uh, for premium investments is uh, about three times greater than Kathmandu. Um, and then the last line there is very important too. I like to see low debt, no matter the economic conditions. I don't care if interest rates are low, low debt's pretty good. And premium investments actually have net cash on their balance sheet by $302 million. And Kathmandu actually did pay down debt with a capital raising. They're only at $9 million. So looking pretty good for both companies there. Looking at some of the metrics here. So the first one there is enterprise value divided by the operating cash flow. This ratio, uh, I like to use this instead of P ratio. P ratio of 10 is dependent on earnings. And if you saw Kathmandu, $8 million, their PRS is probably something like 90, which is a ridiculous um, number. Uh, even growth companies, that would be a ridiculous number for you. Just see how uh, profit can manipulate some of the value metrics. When you look at price uh, with the EV over operating cash flow, I like to see numbers less than six for value plays. Uh, for growth companies, that number is usually above 20. So below six for both these companies, Kathmandu is a slightly better value play here. And definitely when you look at price book ratio, price to book ratio, which is comparing the um, net equity to the market cap. Um, I'd like to see numbers less than one for value plays here. Uh, we see premium investments has a little bit of a more of a premium attached to it by a factor of two. And the operating cash flow margin here is just 
how well a company can take their revenue and um, you know, transform that into operating cash flow. These numbers are a little bit inflated, I think, due to COVID-19 and some of the stimulus um, coming forward. So these numbers are a little bit higher. So it looks pretty good, but 39% compared to 22%. So premium investments has a more efficient way of converting their revenue into cash flow. That's what it says. Now, online sales is the future. <clears throat> there is no doubt about that. If you uh, don't believe that, you, I think you've got your head in the sand right now. Online sales is the future. It's going to transform the world. It's already transforming the world. And if any retail companies aren't getting into online sales at the moment, they're in big trouble. So I like to look at online sales, see how a company is doing. And fortunately, both Katmandu and Premium Investments tick the box here. So at the moment, Katmandu like, over the past year have really accelerated their online sales. And you would have expected that just because of, of the virus. And at the moment, they're at 15.7% of, of total sales um, online at the moment. I would like that to increase even further. I want this to get above 50, preferably even above 75%, because I think um, once you go to online sales, you've got the whole world um, in your hands. Uh, online sales, Britain, the traditional brick and mortar has a very small sort of um, some market. Online, when you go online, it's the whole world really your, is your market. So growing fairly well, Katmandu. I think premier investments uh, got into online sales a little bit earlier than Katmandu. They're also growing really well. At the moment, they're 18.1 penetration, so 18.1% of their total sales is online. So that's very good. And again, I would like this to increase even further. And the second year or second half online sales is at 25.5%. And which makes sense. A lot of stores, a lot of their brick and mortar stores were closed. They are even threatening of closing even more stores because of uh, problems with uh, rent. And I think this is the future. We're going to see brick and mortar stores close more rapidly over the next five to 10 years. Just excuse me for a second. Let's go into the technicals. So I'm a fundamental, well started off my investment journey is looking at fundamentals, but I've adjusted to where I, th I believe that technicals, the charts are a very important process of when, when to buy and when to sell. So I'm gonna look at the 10 year weeklies for both and the six year dailies or six month dailies. So just looking at its 10 year weekly. So typically what you wanna see here is a chart that goes from the bottom left to the top right. And um, premium investments has done that, especially between the years 2013 and 16, we saw a really good uptrend there. Over the past three or four years, it's gone sideways, bit of volatility there. But if you take out the COVID-19 when it went down to $8, it's been trading in between a range of $14 and $20 for the past three years or so. So trading between that range at the time, at the moment, it's towards the top of that range, which suggests um, it may not be the buy. If it goes above $20, that's when it'd be a good, I think, long-term buy. So I'm waiting for that point. It did get on $20 with their result release on Friday. And then it came back with a bit of selling, possibly because of this. Katmandu 10-year weekly looks a little bit uglier. Um, but this is more of the buy at the low, sell at the high sort of chart. So it trades between ranges of say 75 cents and $2.50. If you can buy on the low end of that range, uh, say between 75 cents and a dollar, and then sell between two and 250, you can make a fair bit of money. You could have done that at least twice in this uh, chart. So if you bought in 2012 and then sold in 2014, you would have made some money. And then if you bought between 2015 and 16 and sold 2018 or uh, 2019 towards the start of 2020, again, you would have made some good money. Um, at the moment, it's toward the lower end of that range. So um, if you are thinking uh, maybe a short-term buy or medium-term buy, this could be the good time to buy in. Could go lower, uh, just have to wait and see. Uh, looking at six-month daily, just looking at some trends here. As I mentioned before, on the release of their results, they did open at $20 and there was selling. So not a good-looking daily chart here. When you open at the high and then close at the low, that's actually quite bearish. So they did open at $20, which is a bit of resistance, uh, but a very, say a nice looking uptrend, very gentle uptrend, I like gentle uptrends. 
moving averages all going up. But we'd like to, I'd like to see what happens over the next few weeks because there was a bit of selling with the results. Uh, Katmandu, we are seeing a bit of convergence of the moving averages. That's one thing I look for. But it's been trading between $1 and $1.20 for about three to four months. So if you just sold at a you bought at a dollar, sold at dollar twenty. You would have actually done a pretty good over the past uh, three or four months. So it did sell back uh, from a dollar twenty about by the start of this week. And I thought maybe with the release of their results, it could have gone back towards one. But there was a bit of buying for those results. So even though they did only have a net profit after tax of eight million, I thought that could have forced some of the more amateur um, investors selling, running scared. I definitely did see that in some of the social media. Uh, People just focused on that 8 million running scared. This is a sell, oh, they're gonna to get to 80 cents, oh, this is horrible. Uh, but we saw that over the last few days. Uh, there wasn't, that that number wasn't really um, induced the market selling, we'll say. So um, if this goes above $1.20, that would be bullish. If it goes below a dollar, that would be bearish at the moment. I am not thinking of buying into Katmandu unless uh, it goes above $1.20 for the short term. This would be a short to medium term buy if I do buy in. So the results, so I think uh, premium investments has the better volumentals. Um, one thing is they do have a holding of Maya, which is a sort of a negative, but they also have a holding in Breville. Breville Group, I think most of you should know who Breville Group are. Um, I actually do hold Breville Group. Um, I'm a very big fan of Breville Group. I think they have a very promising future ahead. And because premium investments has a holding in that, I sort of, you know, um, that's a bit of a tick. Katmandu is better value based just based off their fundamentals. Um, I think there is some good value there, uh, especially over the next year or so. If they do have a little bit of growth there, um, I think this would be compelling, compelling numbers, compelling uh, sort of value right now. Premium investments has moved a bit further into online sales, but they both get the tick box here. So they're both getting into online sales, which is good to see. Uh, Katmandu is more interesting on the short term just because it's trading between that dollar dollar twenty range. And if it goes above the dollar twenty, I would buy. Uh, premium investments, uh, I think if I do buy, that'd be more of a long term play, looking at the long term five to ten years, um, because I think uh, there is potential for more long term growth with premium investments. And the reason I say that is uh, Katmandu acquired Ripple. I'm not the biggest fan of acquisitions just because a lot of times acquisitions don't go well. In fact, research has shown acquisitions tend to be value destroying for uh, shareholders. Uh, hello, Slater and Gordon, good acquisition that was. So um, when a big company typically buys um, another company, it tends to be value destroying for, for shareholders. Um, it's not true for small companies, so you could say Katmandu is a smaller company, but um, Rip Curl is a fairly big um, company in itself, so I'd like to see how that plays out in the end if I was buying long term. So Katmandu would be more of a short term buy, just based off that acquisition. The state of the economy going forward, uh, a lot of uncertainties about how we're going to play out over the next few years with the state of the economy. Before COVID-19, retail was quite sluggish. And there is a chance once we get out of this COVID-19, retail sales will go back to being quite sluggish uh, just because we're going to have higher debt. Um, more people are going to be in debt. Um, you could even say with the reduced lending standards announced yesterday by Frydenberg, we're going to see households get further into debt, which would be a bit of a burden onto retail sales. So there's that possibility too. Solomon Liu, I'm not sure if he's a negative or positive for PMV. For those who don't know who Solomon Liu is, you might have to uh, open your eyes because he's always seems to be in the news. He likes, he's very outspoken about things, very anti Maya, he seems like, but even though they hold Maya, but he's the chairman of Premium Investments and he's always in the news, always in the news, very negative against Maya. That's all I will say. Not sure if that's a negative or positive. Some of the things he say, I agree with, some of the things I say, I think he just shut his mouth. And probably the other thing is, um, well, that's it. I've already mentioned Breville. I was going to say, the other thing going for premium investments is they do have a holding of Breville, but I think I've mentioned that twice. So I won't mention that a third time. So overall, 
Um, probably short term, Catman Do might be a buy if it gets above dollar twenty. And long term premium investments, I think they do have a better long term um, potential. I'll say, but uh, I don't hold either company yet. And um, that's all I really have to say about both companies. Hi there. Yes. Um, learn something and make sure your battery and your camera is fully charged because I lost power there and I really can't be bothered uh, recharging it now and doing this part of the video a little bit later so just using my webcam my worst webcam so anyway I just had one slide to go so one thing to say so that's really all I've got for NEP invests today uh, and make sure if you do need professional advice make sure you seek out a professional because I'm not a professional I'm doing this for fun learning a lot learned about uh, premium investments and Kathmandu during doing this video. Uh, I did know both companies, but I know a little bit more now. So hope you enjoy this video. And until next video, have a good day. See ya.